old. You know, they said old old hymns. That one would never right. get old. Yeah. 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 Gracious and eternal Father, we just thank you for this opportunity. Father, I thank you that you have called yes. me to be one of your choice queens in your heart. Yes. And I just thank you, Father God. You have called me, so let's get with it. <laughs> Amen. 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 He calls, so let's do your work, God. I'm not going to be long. As you heard Pastor say, when I came to him, um, I tried to get out of it. <laughs> I ran for a long time. All right. But uh, God, when God calls you, he's almost like those bill collectors. If he calls you, he calls you, he calls you, and you answer. Amen. Only thing about the bill collectors, you can let the answer machine get in. But when God calls you, you can get in the Sooner or later. So you might as well do it sooner so you don't have to go through so many trials and troubles and heartaches because you don't answer. So I finally answered. And he stopped calling. That's how the bill collectors are. If you answer, they'll stop calling. If you pay them, they'll stop calling. Yeah. Amen. So I'm going to pay my dues to God and answer his call. Amen. Amen. Those of you that have your Bibles, I'm not going to be long. It doesn't take long. Take your time. Amen. First scripture I want to look at is going to be Mark 7. Call out a few scriptures and turn to them and then we're going to let it do what it does. Amen. Mark 7. Once I get through these couple of scriptures, then we're going to go in and I'm going to tell you what we're going to be talking about. A lot of people like to give their title first. But I want to wait and see if you kind of figure out where I'm going with this. Right. Mark 7, verse 6. Here Jesus is in, 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 in a meeting here with the Pharisees, as you would say, gathered around, and they're having a problem with the disciples eating with unwashed hands. We've all been taught to wash our hands before we eat. Right? But the Bible says it's not what it goes into the Bible, rather what comes out. Amen. Mark 7, verse 6, it says, and he answered and said unto them, Where hath Isaiah prophesied of you, hypocrites? As it is written, This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Amen. 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 Matthew 7, verse 21. He says here, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Two scriptures is all we're going to need tonight. Amen. I want to talk to you about a few as we go along, but those two are the ones that I wanted us to turn to. What I want to talk to you about is a set of identical twins. The first one's name is religion. The second one's name is Christian identity theft. Religion, Christian identity theft. You know why I call them identical twins? They do the same thing. Religion says, I can go to church. I can pay my tithe, I can shout, I can speak in tongues, I can dance, I can do whatever I want to do, mm -hmm. but I just don't have to get real. All right. All right. I don't have to give my heart to all God. Right. I'm doing all those works. Surely that ought to count for something. That ought to get me in. Christian identity theft, if you look up the word identity theft, it, what that is is someone taking another person's name right. and using it mm -hmm. 
Oh. It benefits them. Oh, yeah. Christian identity theft does the same thing. All right. We name our business All right. in a religious or a Christian name right. to draw people in. Right. But we don't reflect the name that we put out there. Right. We live any kind of way we want to. I speak in tongues. I sing. I sing. I shout, I can tear church up. <laughs> but when I get back out that door, I'm the same person I was when I came in. Right. That's what religion and identity theft says. The twins, the devil don't want you to know that. But they run hand in hand, and they work for him. And they're taking a lot of people straight to hell. So, how do I know? If I'm entertaining these twins, you can take any twins from your own life. We can go out and tell everybody, I'm a Christian. Every time we walk through a door, I'm a Christian. I'm highly favored. We got all them good words. Our favorite ones is I'm blessed and highly favored. <laughs> I'm blessed by the best. God is the head of my life. <laughs> but we give him no time. We do nothing for him, but we always want him to do something for us. Always. Like we think we do things on our own, in our own strength. What does the scripture say? Without me, you can do nothing. Nothing. We can't even get up in the morning time. I hope we all don't think that that alarm clock is what's waking us up. The alarm clock is not what's waking us up. God is what's waking us up. That's just an instrument that we use. But yet we say, who my alarm clock didn't go off this morning? We depend on that alarm clock. But that's not who we need to be putting our trust in. We put our trust in everything but the right purpose, which is Jesus Christ. I love that little scenario that pastor does sometimes. We have faith in a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. But when we come in here, do we see if this chair going to hold me? Yes, right. Right. Sit down. Yeah. Yes, right. We don't do that. We come in and we just sit right there. Why? Because we think that chair going to hold us. Because we got faith in that chair. <laughs> we got faith. We'll tell you how big our faith is. We go to work, we work 40 hours, we supposed to get paid on Friday. We done spent the check by Thursday. Got oh, <laughs> faith that that check will be in the But well, what happens if that job goes good and goes bankrupt overnight? Check is not going to be there. But religion, let me get back, those twins say that I got faith to know that I get I pay I get paid for 40 hours. I got faith to know that if I get in that car and start, it's gonna go. I got faith to know that if I come to church and pay my tithe, God gonna bless me. I don't have to give him no time. I'm doing everything that he asked me to do. I'm doing everything that he asked me to do except give him my heart. Matthew 7 and 21 just said. Everyone that says, Lord, Lord, is not going to enter into the kingdom of God. We can ask everybody in here, do I love the Lord? Everybody hang on Lord. Right? We can ask everybody in here, are you a Christian? Everybody hang on Lord. Right? Ask everybody, are they genuine, pure Christians from the heart? How many hands on God? Amen. They got this right. They don't hesitate. No hesitation on it. Because being a true child of God is not cost us a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Things that we're not going to want to give up. Yes, you mean I got to stop going to the class? Mm -hmm. I pay my time? Yes, <laughs> you mean I got to quit hanging out on the corner? I go to church on Sunday? You mean I got to sing in the choir? I praise him. I sing Sister Pam. Mm -hmm. I preach pastor. Mm -hmm. Y'all ever seen that movie Left Behind? Mm -hmm. Preach got left behind. Mm -hmm. 
twin. Or twin. Trying to let you think that you got to step into heaven because you do all these good deeds. I'm here to tell you, works is not going to save you. That's right. That's right. That's right. Works is not going to save you. You can be the usher. You can be the deacon. You can be the the organist. You can be the preacher. You can be all them things. All those works is not going to get us into heaven if we're not genuine sad. What does he say in his word? Hebrews 12, 14. Without holiness, no man, no man. No man. No man. <laughs> shall see the Lord. Yeah, that's the, that's he also said in Matthew 5, blessed are the pure in heart. Those are the ones that are done to God. So I'm asking you that. Is your heart pure? Yes. Oh, God. Not right now. Is our heart pure before God? God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second Corinthians 2 and 11 says, and I'm going to paraphrase this, so don't, let, don't let Satan trick you. Come on don't now. let him get the advantage of you to make you think now. that you're going to heaven. Come on now. Come on now. At least he gets the advantage of us. Yeah. How do we get the advantage over Satan? Simple. You get real about God. Right. If you get real about him, he'll do the rest. He will keep you. He will fight the battles for us. You know, one of my favorite things is about the devil, as far as him trying to, to trick people, he says, I don't, I don't mind you going to church. Go on in there. You know, it used to be a time where he wouldn't come in. He waited on you when you get come back out. But now that rascal so bold, he thought he was with you. And sit right beside you. He don't care that you come to church. He don't care that you sing. He don't care that you do a whole lot of things. You just don't get real about God. That's all thing you care about. But other than that, you do all them things. That's what those twins do. They let you do all those things. As long as you don't get real about God, you can do whatever you want to do. So how do I know whether or not I'm serving God? Or I'm serving them identical twins. It's simple. Mm -hmm. You look at your life. Mm -hmm. And if you're still doing the things that you used to do, I don't even have to finish that. You do the All right. You can finish that. (laughs) If you are still doing the same thing that you used to do, but you're saying that I'm a child of God. Amen. As they say, things that make you go. Well, I pray all the time. Are we in a position to pray? 
It's our lives line up with God to where we can yeah. pray to him yeah. or we can get a prayer through. Right. Right. A lot of people go to the pastor or to somebody that they know has a connection to God and that first thing you know what they tell them? I want you to pray for me. Right. Why do you think those people are asking you to pray for them? Because they know they can't get one through. So they go to the ones that they feel can get a prayer through. Amen. Get right with God so when you can talk to God yes, yourself. Lord. Yes, Lord. Don't depend on somebody else to yes. pray for you. Amen. Pray for yourself. Yes, yes. 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 real good. Yeah. But those twins don't want you to get there. Yeah. I read a sign on the church that says that if you only pray to God when you having problems, <laughs> you in trouble. <laughs> you in trouble. Prayers to God, you know what that is? Prayer is communication. Yes, Lord. It's talking to him. That's right. And guess what? You don't have to be put on hold or anything like that. We got a direct line to God. Glory to God. And nobody and you don't have to click over. God don't have to click over to get the other line. He's always there. Amen. To listen to us. Amen. All he wants us to do is submit our lives unto him. Amen. And stop hanging out with them twins. Amen. Now I want to introduce to you a set of triplets. These here, these triplets here, we got a set of twins right here. <laughs> Not religion and Christian self <laughs> 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 But I want to introduce to you all today a set of identical twins. And I want to turn over to somebody the triplets that can deliver you from those identical twins all if right. you let them. All all right. Right. Their names are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Now those triplets, you want to know them. Those are the ones that's gonna always be by your side. He said, "I will never leave you nor forsake you." We always talk about God don't left me. God said He won't leave you. You can't left Him. That's right. But He won't leave us. He said, "I will be with you until what?" All we have to do is submit our lives unto God. Amen. Amen. Christian identity theft. Identity theft. The world got a whole bunch of things to protect your identity out there, right? What they say it is. But just your, your identity still gets stolen in most cases. But they got a lot of things out there to try to protect you from being a victim of identity theft. Who protects God from identity theft? There's nobody out there that can protect God from us stealing his identity. Mm -hmm. Now, you might get caught in the world. Now, the world, you go before the judge, you get caught for identity theft. Mm -hmm. But no judge on this earth will even touch Christian identity theft. Because you know why? It's not important to them. You're not breaking none of their roots. But guess who it is important to? To God. And one day we will get caught. Christian identity theft. What does he say? Everybody got to come before the Lord for judgment. Everybody does. So what we escape down here, we want to escape them. God got this long book. I call them storage buildings. <laughs> of all that stuff, we, done, we think we done got away with it. All right, all right. All right. Yes, no. And guess what? It's going to be right there the book. for us to be judged by if mm -hmm. we don't change our lives. See, if we change our lives on this side and get real about God, what does he do? He throws all that away. Yeah. It's all right. 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 Amen. So we don't have to be worried about getting judged on both. Wipe your slate clean. You can start over fresh. 
Wouldn't it be nice if we can start over from baby friendship? Yes, yes. Amen. We've done a lot of things different. Mm. Oh, yeah. A whole lot of things different. Well, Nicodemus thought that, didn't he? Amen. Jesus Amen. said, Nicodemus, except you be born again. Yes, Lord. You know what Nicodemus said? <laughs> I'm going to show you some ignorance. <laughs> but nigga, they was supposed to be a teacher yeah. of the word of God. But you know what he says? When Jesus told him, nigga, they was accept you be born again, he said, can a man enter into his mother's womb a second time? That is so ignorant. I'm trying to explain. How can a grown man enter into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus in it. He just threw that off. He just, he just summed him up as just being eager. So he just said, you know what, nigga, demons? <laughs> Say that again, Pastor. He don't, he don't even understand other things. So how can he understand spiritual things? So tell me how this man could be teaching the people God's word. Amen. That's why you better study the Bible for yourself. Like you can tell you anything. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you for a long time. I've always heard this this year saying, clearness is next to godliness. When I got saved and found out that that wasn't in the Bible. Right. <laughs> what is that? Clearness is next to godliness. That's not even a scripture. I was going to school this morning. Because all this time, my mama. Told us to clean the house. <laughs> so I'm thinking cleanliness is next to God, so we got to clean the house because that's next to God. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a scripture. There's a lot of things that people are telling us that is not in the Word of God. I'm just a better study. People will take this thing to hell with their, their terminology and their wisdom of the Word of God. Those twins, mm -hmm. Christian identity theft. All right. Now, I've told you that Christian identity theft and religion will not get us into heaven. So when you go to heaven, don't, don't, don't sit down like you don't know what God's talking about when he asks you, did you get ready? Why did you not get ready about me? And say, nobody told you. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. Amen. Are you here tonight? Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Works. Alone will not get us into heaven. That's right. Amen. If you get caught doing identity theft down here, you subject you may get what? How many years? <laughs> Christian identity theft is life without no possibility of parole. That's eternal death. Yes. Amen. Everlasting. Yes, no way of getting out. But we can get it right today. Thank you, Lord. Man. We can get it right today. Man. We can say, Sister Ben told me religion will not get me into heaven. Singing in the choir won't get me into heaven. Boy, I thought that was good. Singing praises on the God. I thought that'd get me in. I pay my tithe. Met this guy one time. He said that his goal was to pay 60% of his check for tithe that he was going to live off of for Really? People will deceive you into thinking that they're Christians by, by those little things like that right there. But does our life reflect God? I'm going to tell you something about Christianity. Christianity is a life led, not a life saved. Come on, Amen.
You want to know? Turn back around and run. They'll tell you. They are finished. I'll just tell all your business. So you better not do nothing that you don't want to find out. So they'll tell you. They just like children. Children, children will tell you. <laughs> over to God, be yeah. fully committed to him, yes. and get some new friends of our, those tri- uh, triplets that I was telling you about. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you, you'll get in with them. Yes. If we commit our lives to God, get yes. a good foundation, yes. Yes. not one that shabby. What, what is your foundation built on? Yeah. What are you? Builders in here, Reverend Drake? Foundation, it's got to have something sturdy to hold it, right? right. Otherwise, when the wind and the storms come, it's going to just rip it down, right? right. Amen. 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 Y'all remember the three little peas? Yeah. Some of our houses don't take that much of it. Some of our houses, all you got to do is, and it falls. <laughs> When troubles come, the trials come, Mm -hmm. that good foundation of those triplets will keep us, will hold us, will support us, will help us. Christianity is a full-time job. It's not like the 40-hour job and you get the weekends off. You don't get no weekends off. You don't get you don't get any holidays off. We get no time off. Let me give you a, a scenario here, and I'm gonna sit down. You know you're always fighting the devil. Okay. Amen. Yes. You know I saw this. Uh, there's a security along a security place that has a sign that says, "We don't sleep, so you can." <laughs> Sleep in. Amen. And when he don't sleep, he don't want you to sleep. Amen. You ever get up in the morning, you feel like you're tired, like you've been in a battle? Mm-hmm. You have. Mm-hmm. You've been in a spiritual battle. Right. Because the devil don't quit because you go to bed. Right. You know how many people don't get up the next day because they had been fighting all night long with that rascal? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, them triplets don't sleep in. Right. Now, who do you want? To watch over you. All right. All right. All right. I choose the triplets. Because I know if I got them triplets, I can sleep. Because I'm going to bed with them on my mind, and in my mind while I'm sleeping, I'm just praising him. When I get up in the night, I get up about 50 times, I tell you. I may be exaggerating a little bit, but this show feels like it. I get up about many times. But when you get up, every night that I get up, since I've answered God's call, when I get up, I got a song in my heart. Amen. I get up, I'm singing. I'm thinking about the Lord. I'm tripping over things, going on, stumbling through the house, trying to get to the bathroom, and I'm still, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Singing praise unto God. God has got to be a full-time job. Pastor said he don't have no part-time position. If they go to Burger King, they got some part-time positions. No, not about now. Times are hard. Nobody hired them. Jesus hired them. Amen. Amen. He always hired them. You looking for a new candidate every day. Those twins, mm-hmm. and I 
told you about those triplets. Yes, yes, yes. You made the decision. You make the decision. You can make that decision today. Amen. It's time out for us to talk about God. It's time out to say, quit saying I'm blessed and highly favored. It's time out to, for saying I'm blessed by the best. It's time out saying I'm a Christian. God loves me. I should be a royal. God has made us royal priesthood. You know how I many people misunderstand that scripture about royal priesthood? They think we ought to be riding around in Mercedes and fine cars. God I'm supposed to be a priest. <laughs> That's not what that means. That's not what that means. That's not what that means. I mean, you've been set apart to be a, a, a worshiper or an yes. intercessor. Witness. Yes, Lord. That's what that means. Oh, yes. Thank you. Well, I'm going to the doctor going to have to say this in. That's not what it means. But I tell you what. It's time for us yes, to make a decision. Yes, God left many examples in his word. Mm-hmm. He want us to walk like him. Amen. He want us to talk like him. Yes, yes, he want us to be all that we are in him. Yes, and you know what? It's time for us to get the stepping Come on, yes, for Jesus. Amen. It's time out for this. It's not about for religion and Christian identity them. It won't get you in. Amen. So when you go to God and you tell God, I didn't know about that. Mm-hmm. He's going to say, yeah, you did. You remember on March 19, 2013, mm-hmm. Pam's first sermon? She told me about it. May. 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 You might have been asleep or you wasn't listening. <laughs> or you was going to sit down and shut up or I'm just here just to support. I ain't trying to hear what you're saying. March 19th. May. 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 Amen. 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 